All right, everybody, welcome back to the Black Gold Homestead. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about seed starting. What I'm going to be doing today is starting some of my seeds for my 2021 vegetable garden. And I'm doing an overview of what I'm doing here for my indoor setup and how I start the seeds indoors. Today, we're going to be starting um, mainly our peppers as well as some of our um, tomatoes, just a few tomatoes. But we're going to be doing some peppers today and tomatoes, um, and we're going to do some Brugmansia flower, which I got those seeds right here. Um, the reason why we're starting now, we're in the beginning of February, but a lot of these peppers are old heirloom varieties, and they take a total of 8 to 12 weeks head start. So two to three months of a head start before you're able to transplant them outdoors. So that puts us at this time of the year when we're starting them. Now I got seeds here from Baker Creek Heirloom Seed Company. They are a great company to get seeds from. I also got some other seeds here from um, Seeds of Change. Those are my eggplants. I'm um, not seeds of chains, uh, um, Southern Exposure, um, Seeds Exchange. They are a really good company, and I've grown a lot of seeds from them before. And I, then I got some from Walmart, um, from Burpee, some organic seeds. But as far as the setup goes, we do have a window in this room that faces west, so they get um, direct afternoon sun, um, the seedlings. But I also have two different lights. We have this one, which is... Um, fluorescent tube lighting, kind of like you'd see in a shop. This one works pretty good. I've used it for a lot of years for the seedlings and it works great. And then I also have this one, which I used closer. This one's really bright and powerful. This one is a um, LED grow light specifically designed for growing the seedlings. And this one works amazing. And then the other thing that if you don't have, I recommend getting is a heating pad. This works really good for your um, um, peppers. This really, peppers, eggplants, and tomatoes benefit from heat. Although tomatoes, you don't necessarily need it. And um, the reason why we got a light and then another light, the peppers like a lot of sunlight. The tomatoes will do fine under a little bit gentler light, but the peppers really like it strong. So here you can see I got a tray. We haven't yet put seeds in, but we're going to. And it has um, a dome on the top and a tray on the bottom. This tray can hold your water and the dome keeps the humidity in, which helps in the germination process. If you look back on some of my older videos, you'll see that last year I tried using the peat pots, the biodegradable ones, for the first time. I was not happy with my results and I'm not going to be doing that again. I'm going to be sticking with the plastic pots. The peat pots, I had a lot of problems with dampening off. Now I'm starting the tomatoes in these small trays. I mean the peppers in the small trays, but the tomatoes I start out in a bigger cup or in a bigger plastic pot, which I have a couple different size plastic pots. This size, and I got some bigger square ones. Just something bigger because they do grow faster and they're bigger plants. And um, we don't fill the pot all the way with soil though because Tomatoes root along their stems, so once they get up above it, I fill in around them and it helps them get a stronger root system. So now I'm going to go ahead and do some more prep work and we'll pick up and I'll tell you about what I did. Not really, because it's not even going to touch the dirt. Okay. 
Now the reason why we're putting two seeds per hole is because these are um, older seed and I want to make sure that every single little cell in this tray has little seedlings in it. I don't want to have any wasted space, you know. Okay guys, so I haven't got all these cells planted yet, but I did get this first little pack of the banana peppers seeded. So I just kind of, I don't do a very deep hole. I just do it about that far, so maybe, I don't know, a third of an inch. And I just take my finger and gently pack it down. Now, you can see here that we are starting these pepper seeds in a small tray. Um, and you may wonder why we don't start them in the bigger cups, like the tomatoes. We can start the peppers in a bigger cup, um, because they probably, honestly, will need transplanting in a bigger cup before we take them out. But the problem with that is, because this is so tall, the heat mat, mat cannot sufficiently heat up to the top layer of the soil where the seedling is. So it doesn't really do the job. So starting them in the smaller tray works out better. Okay, so we got all of these trays here seeded with our seeds and ready to go. But if you look here, you'll notice that I left these ones still open to where you can still see the seeds. You can see it back there pretty good. You can see the little seeds. And I'm just going to show you what I do is I very gently take my finger very gently, it doesn't need a lot of pressure, and just lightly push it over and cover them. The, it's good to keep them covered, that keeps them moist. If they're on the surface, they'll dry out. But um, I gently cover them. And you just do it gently, you don't need to press down very hard. So these are all good to go. And now I can put my dome back on to keep the humidity and moisture in. If you see that the surface of the soil is beginning to dry out, then you can go ahead and either water from the bottom or mist to keep it moist. Um, I like to just water from the bottom. That works well for me. But um, you can do whatever works best for you. And as far as the lights go, I have them on a timer so they can kick on and off on their own. And they run for about... 16 hours a day so it's roughly estimated 16 hours a day well not estimated but it's right around 16 hours a day that I keep the lights running and one other thing you'll notice is that um, I have the eggplant separating the sweet peppers and the hot peppers there's controversy on this whether or not um, if you plant the hot peppers and the sweet peppers too close the um, flavors will mix. Um, so I always leave a little gap in between just in case, but I've never had it happen. But just for a precaution. So um, now I'm just gonna show you some tomatoes that I'm gonna start. And um, they're pretty much the same way. They're in a bigger planter though, and um, they don't need the heat, but if you have the heat, go ahead and give it to them. They'll germinate faster. Now, while I'm doing this, I want to mention, some people might wonder, well, if I have a window, which we do have in this room, do I need supplemental lighting? The answer is yes and no. Um, I strongly recommend having extra lighting the stronger, the brighter the lighting, the stronger the seedling will be. If the seedling doesn't have enough lighting, it'll atoliate and get really long and leggy as it stretches to the light, which is not what you want to be dealing with. So I recommend the lighting. Also here where we live, we live in Pennsylvania, which is in the northern, um, northeastern part of the U.S. So we have four seasons and we have winter. And right now we're seed starting and it's winter. So um, 
there's less daylight now than there is in the spring and summer. So by adding the lighting, they have um, extra light, which gives them a better possible start. And the better the start, the stronger and healthier the plants will be throughout their whole um, life. So um, you don't necessarily need it, but it's best to have. If you don't have it, I strongly recommend that if possible, you use a southern window to start them in. We have a western window, but if you don't have the supplemental lighting, I strongly recommend using a southern facing window. That'll get you the most strongest direct light all day long. And you can't really burn them when you're starting them indoors, but you can burn them whenever you're hardening them off which that's when you acclimate them to the outdoors. And we'll make videos on that as the seedlings are getting older and ready to go outdoors later in the season. So what I just did is I pre-moistened this soil. I could have um, put water in the bottom and let it soak up on its own, but that would have taken longer. So I went ahead and watered them from the top. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna do my Brungmansia first. Brungmansia is um, a type of flower, also known as angel's trumpet, and um, it is a poisonous, if I believe, if I remember correctly. So these are my little Brungmansia seeds. They look like um, large eggplant seed. And we're just going to, I never really grown these before, grown these before, so we're just going to kind of plop them in here under the lights. I don't know how long of a head start they need. And we're just going to wing it. We're just going to see how things go. So that's them. And then we're going to do the tomatoes. As I said earlier, um, we don't have these cups filled all the way with soil. That's because as the tomatoes grow up, we fill in around them and they'll grow more roots out the side of the stems. We'll make our little holes. Okay, so we're doing a couple tomatoes here. We're doing two yellow brandy wines. They're a beefsteak type heirloom tomato. And I don't have them both marked because I can tell them apart. They are a potato leaf tomato, which we probably have in old videos. And then these seeds I'm putting in right now here are black cherries. And I'm going to put like six seeds in there because last year I had terrible germination with them. I'd rather just put a whole bunch of things in the start and have to stand and wait to eat. So, last year I didn't have, I planted like four seeds. And these are older seeds I saved myself. But I had zero germination. So, <laughs> and I never reseeded it because I didn't feel like it. And then these ones are ivory pear tomatoes. These are a really nice tomato I like to grow. They do take a long time to mature, and they can be a little finicky. They're, uh, as the name suggests, a uh, pear tomato. A lot like your um, yellow pears, <coughs> but these ones are larger, and they have ivory skin, which I have in an old video from... I think maybe 2019 on my channel. And these ones should germinate good. I saved these myself. And when you're saving your seeds, always save more than you think you need. It's better to have extra seeds than not enough. All right, Amy's apricot. That is a really nice tomato to grow, and I've grown it a lot of times before but it's very 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 slow maturing and um, it's a little finicky but it's a nice tomato it's a nice snacking tomato and for a cherry tomato it has a pretty long life it um, has a thicker skin so it lasts a good while um, on the shelf. It's another old heirloom variety and I got these seeds many years ago from Southern Exposure Seed Exchange. I don't know if it um, says the year on it but it may. I 
I don't know, but they're older seeds. I want to say they're like from 2015. And then the last ones we're going to plant today are the um, yellow brandywine. I could wait to start these a little later, but I want to get them started because I really like them and I want them to have nice size on them. So I'm getting them early in the season once I transplant them out. They are a yellow beefsteak type tomato, old fashioned heirloom, and they have, we're actually gonna use these seeds. It's the same variety. I originally got them from Southern Exposure Seed Exchange, but they're a potato leaf and I really, really enjoy growing them. They are exceptional. <laughs> And these are old seeds. I wish I had a date to tell you how old they were. Um, oh, packaged for sale in 2016. So they're older, but not too, too old. But I've grown these several years in a row, and I have my own seeds that I saved off of them. Now these ones I may move into a window as they get bigger. I'm not sure if I will or not, but I could. But if I do, I'll move them in a south window. So that little video was just an overview of our seed starting, showing you kind of how I do it. This is by no means is the absolute right way to do it but I hope you can get some ideas off this video and I hope you enjoy watching and seeing how I do things um, if you like what you see us doing here please um, hit the like button comment down below and subscribe to the channel um, I hope that everybody is staying safe and warm and that um, Everybody is excited for spring because I know I am. So thank you for watching and see you on the next video.